Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles and today I want to go over some of the books that I have on wild edible and medicinal plants and talk a little bit about each one and why I like some of them and why I don't like some of them. I'm hoping that this video will give some of you guys some ideas on some things to keep in mind whenever you're looking for books on this subject. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, now the very first book that we're going to talk about is the Peterson Field Guide to Medicinal Plants and Herbs of Eastern and Central North America. This is a really, really good book on the subject. As a matter of fact, it's actually one of my favorite books on the subject. Alright, now why is the Peterson Field Guide to Medicinal Plants and Herbs of Eastern and Central North America such a good book? And why do I like it so much? Well, you can see these really nice color photographs that this book has, and you can also see all this text. This book has a lot of really good text when it comes to descriptive information on the uses of the plant. So this is a really good book to give you an appreciation on how each plant is supposed to be used. I'll flip through so you can kind of see the detail of these pictures. These are really, really nice pictures. This book has over 400 different plants in it, Way, way more than the older version. And as you can see, these are high definition color photographs. These aren't line drawings. These aren't old pictures from the 1970s. These are high definition photographs. There are a few pictures in here that are from the old book, but most of them have been completely updated. And the information has been updated as well. So there is a lot of information in this book. And they give sources in the back, as well as a glossary. Alright, and then next on the list we have the Indian Herbology of North America by Alma R. Hutchins. And this is my second favorite book on the subject of medicinal plants especially, just because of its detail of information and its ease of use. Alright, now why do I love the Indian Herbology of North America by Alma R. Hutchins, and why do I think it's such a good resource for learning how to use medicinal plants? Well, it's like I said earlier, this book lists everything alphabetically. You can see here, ash tree. And if I flip forward, you can see Barberry here. So this book lists everything alphabetically. So whenever you're looking for a plant, it makes it really easy to find something. Like for example, if we look up close and personal at the explanation of Bearberry, we can see the uses that it gives here. It talks about dysentery, diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, talks about diabetes, talks about profuse menstruation, piles, spleen, and liver, and pancreas. This book gives a lot of uses. It tells you the bodily influences of the plant. It tells you the medicinal part of the plant. It also gives you the solvents. So this is a really good resource to learn how to use plants for medicine. All right, now the next book that we're going to talk about is the Peterson Field Guide to Edible Wild Plants of Eastern and Central North America. This is a really, really good book on the subject, and it's one of the very first books that I ever bought. And I bought this book back in 2008, and it has received a lot of use. All right, now why do I like the Edible Wild Plants to Eastern and Central North America from the Peterson Field Guide series? Just because this is the first book on the subject that I bought, it has very detailed line drawings, as you can see here. These line drawings are pretty accurate. This does give a really good description, generally, on most of the plants, on what they look like. As you can see here, for Virginia Meadow Beauty, you can see the description it gives. It's very in-depth. It shows you a lot of information about the plant. It tells you about where to find it. It also gives you some good information on how to use it. Not enough for you to really enjoy it, but enough for you to get a good idea on how to use it in your local diet. Alright, now the next book that we're going to talk about is Wildflowers and Ferns of Indiana Forests. This is a field guide by Michael A. Homoya, and this is really from the Indiana University of Botany. And this is something that I want to talk to you guys a little bit about is getting books from your local college and your local college extensions, because they're going to have some really good books on the subject. So let's go into this book and talk a little bit about why I like it so much. This book has some really good high definition photographs as you can see here. I'm going to kind of flip through a little bit. But this book has really good high definition photographs of each plant. So I have a really good idea of what I'm looking at whenever I look through this book and try to find a plant that's in my area or in a forest where I live. Now another really nice thing about this book and getting books from your local colleges is the information is going to be very in depth. It's going to be on point and it's going to be accurate for the time. As you can see here, this gives a really good explanation of this maple leaf viburnum. You can see that it gives enough information for me to know exactly what it is I'm looking at. And it also gives some related shrubs that are also found in the area. So using books from your local colleges is a really good resource to take advantage of. 
All right, now the next book that we're going to talk about is Jude's Herbal Home Remedies. And this is a really good book with a lot of in-depth information on how to use a lot of herbs that are domestic and wild. Now, whenever we get inside of Jude's Herbal Home Remedies, we can see that it gives a lot of information on beauty preparations. It talks about different lotions. It talks about aftershave, winter pickups, gives you acne treatments. It even goes into hair setting lotion, setting gel, vinegar rinse, it talks about hair care. So this is a really, really good book. It even talks about, you know, common things like diarrhea and flu, and it uses things that you might have in your cupboard, things you might have in your cabinet or your kitchen, and it even covers a lot of edible and medicinal plants that can be used medicinally. All right, and then the next book that we're going to talk about is the Peterson Field Guide to Mushrooms. This is an awesome field guide when it comes to identifying mushrooms, and I have used this thing a lot. It has helped me identify a lot of mushrooms. Most of them are poisonous or inedible, but that's okay. It's the learning process that's fun. All right, now the Peterson Field Guide to Mushrooms of North America is a really good book. It tells you a little bit about how to actually use the book, as you can see here. It gives you a lot of good text on that. This book gives you a lot of really good descriptive information on how mushrooms grow before you even get into the actual mushrooms themselves. As you can see here, it's talking a little bit about some of the shapes that you might see and some of the different things that you might run across in the wild whenever you're looking at different mushrooms. But the actual text on each mushroom is very good and it's very in-depth. Now this is very scientific, so it has a lot of big terms that you may not be familiar with. So it's really a good idea to look through the glossary of this book and to get an idea of what exactly it's saying. There are a lot of numbers, there's a lot of millimeters and centimeters, and some weird measurement there that I'm still not sure of. But it is a great, great resource. It even has a full colored plate section full of colored plates of a lot of the different mushrooms that are in this book. It has most of the mushrooms that are in this book. There's been a couple that I haven't been able to find, but that just may be due to my mistake or my missing it. All right, now the next book that we're going to talk about today is called Edible Wild Plants, Wild Foods from Dirt to Plate. And this is by Dr. John Callis, who is a PhD in nutrition and also in several other things that I can't remember right now. I apologize for that. All right, now whenever we get into the Edible Wild Plants by Dr. John Callis, we can see how in-depth this book really is with its amazing high-def photographs, as you can see here. This book talks about each plant from the beginning to the end. It also covers, as you can see here, how to harvest each individual plant through the easiest way. He also tells you how to keep each plant fresh as quick as possible. Each one of these photographs is very large and in great detail and in very high definition. As you can see here, he also covers recipes that you can add each of these edible plants to your normal diet. And every one of these plants grows in the majority of the country. So he put this book together really, really well. He even went to the extent of putting a full nutritional chart of the wild edible plants that are actually in this book. So you can look through and you can compare these herbs to domestic greens. So you can get an idea of how they stack up as far as nutritional value. All right, now the next book that we're going to talk about is the Smithsonian Handbooks to Herbs. This is by Leslie Brimness, and this is an all right book. This is really good for just getting a kind of an appreciation and kind of an understanding on the world of medicinal herbs. Now, whenever we look inside the Smithsonian Handbook to Herbs, we can see that this is very in-depth as far as how many plants that it actually covers. It talks a little bit about each plant, but it does talk in-depth about each of the parts of all of the herbs that are in this book. Now the downside about this book is that it covers herbs from all around the world. However, that can also be a really good thing if that's exactly what you're wanting. And it does have some really good photographs. That is one of the good things about this book is that it has amazing photographs. The information in it is enough to give you just about enough to appreciate each plant and that's really it. It's not enough to get you out there foraging and actually using each plant. So keep that in mind that this isn't a one-stop shop and this isn't a one-stop guide. All right, now the next book is called An A Through Z Guide to Herbs, Gardening, Cooking, and Health. This is an all right book. You can see I got it in the bargain price section of half price books. All right, now whenever we get into the book, Herbs for Healthy Living, we can see that this book 
is all right. It's not very in-depth, but it does talk a little bit about historical uses. As you can see here, it says plantain is a sacred herb. It says one of the nine sacred herbs of the Anglo-Saxons. So this plant, plantain, was very very sacred to Anglo-Saxons and European people back in the old days or the ancient times, and it still is to this day. And ironically enough, natives of North America called this plant white man's foot. So that's kind of interesting. But not only does this book cover plants out in the wild, it also covers plants that you may find domestic or in other parts of the world. You know, it even talks about poppies. It also gives you certain recipes here, as you can see, potato pizza with chicken and rocket which is also known as arugula, which I didn't know that until I had re-looked at this book. I totally forgot about that because someone had left me a comment mentioning that one of the plants I was talking about looked like arugula. All right, now the next book that we have here is called Herbs for Healthy Living, Recognition, Gathering, Use, and Effect. This is an all right book on the subject. It gives you a pretty good description of each plant. It kind of goes through a lot of different things. It has some really good pictures of plants, and it does cover a lot of herbs that do grow out in the wild. All right, now whenever we get into the book Herbs for Healthy Living, we can see that it covers a lot of different plants. You can see that it also has some very good information. Each plant takes up one page approximately. Some take up a little more, some take up just a little less, but they tried to fit one plant on each page. And they have really good high definition photographs. They give you some pretty good information on its location, distribution, constituents, treatments, uses, and lookalikes in some cases where those are applicable. Obviously here it isn't. But it covers plants that you can find out in the wild and plants that are domestic, you know, like common comfrey. Now next up on the list, we have The Complete Book of Herbs and Spices by Sarah Garland. This is an alright book on the subject, I guess. Um, it covers more domestic herbs and plants even, as you can see some peppers here, you can see some cinnamon sticks, you can see some onion, some other peppers down here, you can see some sage. So this covers a lot of domestic herbs and culinary herbs as it says here, but it can be a good resource for those who are wanting to learn about some wild plants or some of their domestic herbs for their medicinal uses. This is basically like what I like to call an introductory book because it doesn't really talk, in my opinion, in depth about any specific herb, but it does give you enough of a general idea of how to grow, garden, harvest, and prepare and use a good portion of herbs. It does have some very good photographs, as you can see here. These are some really nice photos. All right, so that covers a lot of the books that I have on the subject. This isn't all of them that would take way too long. However, I hope this video was able to give you guys an idea of what to look for whenever you're looking for books on the subject of edible or medicinal plants or even mushrooms, for example. There are a lot of options and there are thousands and thousands of books that cover edible and medicinal plants and even herbs and spices from your garden or from your kitchen. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.